All right, so this metric is subscriber retention per cohort, and it tells you how long are the people, your subscribers staying subscribed. So in this example, we acquired 588 customers in September 2021, and right now, only 32% of them are still subscribed. Maybe this um, makes sense or is good, but this is how to read this metric. And by looking at it by dif the different monthly cohorts, you can see if there's different seasonality or expectations based off of the acquisition time frame of when you acquire these customers. And what we can quickly see is that through March through July, um, our subscription retention, while the acquisition numbers are sort of in line, or similar to one another somewhat, the subscription retention is lower than in the previous part of the year. Um, or the previous, the first half of the 12 months. And so we can think of like, did we change anything? Why is that? So looking at breaking it down by the different cohorts can sometimes, depending on your business, illuminate factors of different strategies you're trying. But overall, we could say, okay, within three months, 60% of our subscribers are still subscribed. Within six months, almost 50% of our subscribers are still subscribed. And then 12 months, it's 32%. We can look at more than the past 12 months, and we could also segment this by all of these dimensions we find. So if specific SKUs or customer tags or locations of customers um, or products or order frequency is leading to a better subscription retention, that's really helpful for us to know when we make our different subscription offerings. And all this analysis is available in Peel. We also can look at subscription subscription retention, so looking at subscription numbers versus subscriber numbers, depending on how you want to look at it. There you go. Thanks.